This week's coffee is going to be Colombian Aparapa. So hello everybody and welcome to In My Mug, episode 174 on Monday the 12th of March 2012. My name is Steve Layton and today I'm somewhere a little bit different. Um, I'm at Shrewsbury Coffee House which is funnily enough in Shrewsbury. It's a good place for it, um, which is a really cool coffee shop uh, not far from the train station. If you are coming to Shrewsbury, it is the must come to place. We're so proud of what the guys are doing here with our coffee. They do an awesome job. I'm going to show you some pictures on the screen now of just a whip round of, of, of the, the shop and the layout. It is really, really, really cool. Um, and you must come. Must. Um, it's my first time. I'm really bad because it's so super close to me. Um, but I'm so pleased that I have. It is gorgeous. So, anyway, in my mug is where we talk about coffees. So this week's coffee is called Colombian Operapa. Um, this has come as part of our direct trade, it's not going to be part of the direct trade kind of thing at the end of the year, but it, it is a direct trade that we've done from Colombia. It comes from the southwest of Colombia, which is a place called, in a place called Huila, um, and I'm going to show you in the map thing more exact stuff on that, and I'll, I'll, I will show you in the map bit, but um, it's from a cooperative of small growers, altitude of around about 1600 to 1800 metres above sea level, and that is about as much as we know. Oh, and it's Katura. That is about as much as we know of this coffee. It is a super, super uh, unprovenanced coffee, if you like. I don't know where they were unprovenanced, but we don't know lots about it, and that's because it's a cooperative coffee. This was sent to us as part of our coffees that we bought from um, Santuario. So, you, you know, the Santuario red that we did not long back, and we talked about the yellow, we've also got the Tipica. So, we bought those coffees. That was about uh, 130 bags, something like that, which is not enough to move in a container. So um, we got sent some samples by Camillo uh, of some other coffees from these ones, and he, what he called them was box fillers. Now in the industry, box fillers is a term that's used to talk about coffees that you buy to fill up the box. So to fill up your container, you fill it with these cheaper coffees, and I think, oh, I, don't, I don't buy box fillers, who do you think I am? But we cut them, and it was me, Roland and Andy, on an evening, I think it was a Tuesday evening, I remember the evening, cupping away and went, what is that? And it was just stand out good on the table. And it's a box filler. We paid, I think it was around about 50 cents more than what the market price was at the time, which doesn't sound a lot, but they were really happy with it. We are really happy that we have this great coffee that we can offer to you at a great price. Um, and it is the perfect blending coffee. It is a great base because of that sweetness to put other coffees on top of. Um, and I've really, really been enjoying blending with this coffee. It makes life so, so much easier. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a super accessible, very easy to drink, quaffing coffee that I am very, very excited about trying. But before I do that, I need to show you the map bit. So cue the graphics. It's the map bit. No expense spent, it's the map bit. So hello, here we are again on the map bit. So as normal, we zoom out of has been towers, but this time we make the map go bigger. Go bigger map, go bigger. And we're gonna shoot across the Atlantic again. I can't wait to do one in Africa actually, so we don't just kind of shoot out of Africa. But here you'll see the farms we buy from in Colombia. So at the top, San Antonio, uh, we've got Catania. Then you've got uh, Finca Santuario, uh, which is just to the left of uh, the mountain range. And this is where Columbia Operapa is. Now, it's a rough idea of where it's at because it's cooperative, but around here there's the towns of San Roque, Santa Rosa, El Carmen, and Alto Capa Rosa. And that is the map bit. It's the map bit. No expense spent, it's the map bit. So the map bit carries on. I like the map bit. Um, so 
Uh, before we move on to tasting the coffee, it's time to bring out the wheel of death. I don't know where the wheel of death comes out from when I'm on location, but it'll come out from one of the sides. And this week it's going to be the Aeropress. Well, why is it the Aeropress? Because here at Shrewsbury Coffee House, must come visit, very cool place. Um, they don't have a brewed menu yet. They are working on it and they're going to be really soon, so by the time you come, hopefully they will have, but they don't. So I needed to think of a brew method I could bring with me in my bag and not be too heavy to carry and easy to travel with. And this is where the Aeropress is brilliant, and that's why I love the Aeropress. When I'm going away on my buying trips, the first thing that gets put in my suitcase is my Aeropress with my Porlex grinder stuffed in the top. So I'm uh, going to be using the Aeropress as the brewed coffee version, and I thought it was a good chance to talk about that. So before I do that and I whap you on pause and make drinks, this coffee is a washed coffee. Um, what is a washed coffee, I hear you say? And lots of people send me emails asking that. So what we've done this week is we've made a video, which I'm going to put in the in-between in bit, which shows you what washed coffee is. This is a mechanically scrubbed washed coffee, which means it's gone through a, a pulper, then it's run through the bypass where these brushes scrub the mucilage off. You'll see more in the video, so watch this video and I'll be back with you in just a second. Hello, and welcome to the first in our series of coffee processing videos. Today we're going to be looking at washed coffee. Cherries are collected and put into floating water to sort the ripes and unripes. Unripe or bad coffee will float to the top. They are fed into the depulping machine where the outer part of the cherry is removed and the seed comes out and is moved by water. The water and coffee moves along channels into a large water tank. Any coffee that floats at this stage will be removed. The coffee is left in water for between 8 and 50 hours depending on the country, temperature and local processes to remove the mucilage that is stuck to the seed after the cherry is removed. Once the coffee is taken out of the tanks, it's taken to either concrete patios or to dry on Indian raised beds in the sun. Most specialty coffee will be dried like this, but sometimes mechanical dryers are used. A combination of the two can happen too. The seed will be dried to a moisture content of between 10 and 12%. This is washed coffee. But some countries will go through the process and not leave the coffee immersed in water, but will use mechanical scrubbers to remove the mucilage. This was first done in places where water was in short supply and happens a lot in Colombia, Bolivia and Costa Rica, but is also used in many other places. These machines use only 1 40th of the amount of water traditionally used. The other advantage of this new method is that it reduces the contamination of other water sources. And that's it, washed coffee. So I'm back and I have some drinks coming to me. You'll see a hand coming. Oh, the hand of Roland. So I'm going to start with the espresso because we obviously we don't want the espresso to go cold. And very kindly brought me a spoon, so thank you. I am an obsessive stirrer. Oh, that is so pretty. Thank you. So espresso first. You'll see what I mean by pretty in a sec. So on the nose, you smell this is going to be sweet. Um, on the espresso, I predominantly get brown sugar. Um, it just, it's there, smack on the aroma. Well done, nailed. It's there. It's all about sweetness with this coffee. Don't expect lots of acidity. Do not expect lots of complexity in the espresso. You are gonna get a cup of sweetness. You will not need any sugar added to this. Like last week's with the sugar, you won't need it this week at all. Mm. That's very, very good. So what was I saying pretty about? In fact, let me take a picture of it and I'll put it on the screen. This is, this is slick, are you impressed? Slick. Nice work. I'll put it on the screen. So, oh, that's competition standard. Milk is perfect. You know every week, I say, on the cappuccino. The sweetness of the milk works with the sweetness of the coffee. It really comes together. Boom, 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 boom. 
that's what's happening in the cup. It's sweet, you get the milk, working in partnership with it, it's not fighting it, you still taste the coffee flavours coming through, but that brown sugar and that caramel just rushes through with the milk, it just highlights it that little bit more. Now, are you expecting the brewed coffee to be not as good? This coffee can do everything, and I think in the cupping notes I just put it, upper upper is there nothing that you can't do, because it is a multi-purpose, does everything kind of coffee. Into the brewed, look at this. I didn't bring this, this was here. I'm impressed. So, the AeroPress, what it does, it just gives you a very drinkable cup, very clean, you get no mud in there. So if you're using a French press or a cafetiere, you sometimes get some bits come through and a little bit of mud. Not with the AeroPress, it's smooth, it's sweet, you've got caramel, you've got chocolate, um, it's just an explosion of flavours. On the brood, there's a little shoulder of like red berries, that kind of red fruit, but not too much, just, just a little. So, some numbers, Colombia and Upper Appa, it's Catora, it comes from the Huila region of Colombia, which is in the southwest, as you saw in the map bit, um, altitude of 1600 to 1800 metres, um, yeah, that's as much as we know, tiny cooperative of small producers. Um, I love this coffee. For what should have been a box filler, it is amazing. And it isn't a box filler. This is a quality coffee on its own. And what I hope to do is do something more longer term here. So I'm talking to Camillo at the moment about maybe making it into smaller lots from the producers uh, within the cooperative so we can pay a little bit more, have like a mini competition between them to raise quality and you know, and to actually cut this coffee. I think it is phenomenal and I hope you think the same too. So um, Shrewsbury Coffee House, got to put a little map on the screen of where it is in Shrewsbury. You have to come, you have to come. If this was in London, it would be the coolest shop in the world. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving what the guys are doing here. The barista's just so keen and interested and there have been lots to our, to our roastery, lots to do training sessions, and they're just super interested. And what more can you ask? Beautiful coffee, beautiful surroundings, beautiful people. I'm rambling, shutting up. Life is too short for bad coffee. <laughs>